Right in the deepest heart of Siberia, Russia, is a small town located on the shores of the Yana River, called Verkoyansk. One of the coldest places on the entire planet, only outdone by some parts of Antarctica. In January, the temperatures drop to around negative 56 degrees Fahrenheit, the teeth gnashing sub zero weather. Some of the grounds in Verkoyansk are completely frozen throughout the year, while in some places, these grounds of ice run several hundred feet deep. With such a terribly cold environment, you'd think that not many animals would thrive. And you'd be right. The wildlife is made up of few animals, including the moose, brown and polar bears, northern, manchurian and musk deer, coupled with a bighorn sheep. But of all these animals, the biggest threat to humans remains the wolves. In this frosty environment, these wolves have learned to hunt hares and any other small animal they got the chance to feed on, especially when they're unable to get their paws on deers and moose. But unfortunately, due to the intense cold in the area, the hare population has been falling terribly. And as that continued to get worse, in the winter of 2012, the local wolf population near Verkoyansk began to get extremely desperate for something to chew on. Now, usually these wolves tend to form packs of about six individuals. However, as desperate times call for desperate measures, they started to form even larger packs to pursue larger game. These gray wolves, as they're popularly called, are the subspecies Occidentalis, while in the US we have the smaller timber wolf belonging to the subspecies Eremotus. These gray wolves have, over time, been folklore that has inspired several tales, such as Little Red Riding Hood and a host of others. Compared to regular domestic dogs, these wolves have shown to have larger brains, making them not only more clever and cunning, but also very much more intelligent. And for both these intelligent beasts and the residents of Verkoyansk, the year 2012, without any exaggeration, proved to be a very extraordinary year as these wolves formed what we like to call a super pack of around 400 individuals. These individuals plagued every single member of that town, both humans and animals alike. Usually the Verkoyansk area is known to have between 3,000 and 4,000 wolves that scatter themselves in small packs across the tundra, which in itself is quite alarming. But it wasn't always this way. Unfortunately, back in the days of the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin, the Soviet political leader, made it the point of duty to exile any and every political dissident or enemy to Verkoyansk, which made people fear the area and naturally relocate to other parts of the Soviet Union. Even now that the Soviet Union no longer exists, the town still remains deserted for the most part, leaving it with a short supply of manpower to fight back against the rise of the wolf population. As a result of this short manpower, the wolves started to gain strength and momentum with no one to check their actions. This was made even worse with the government's ban on the use of leg hold traps. These traps proved to be one of the very successful ways to catch the tricky wolves. Immediately, they were considered contraband. The wolf population had a drastic and dramatic increase, and these wolves overburdened their usual food supplies. Which led to this very moment. 400 hungry wolves with a shortage in their regular food supply. This could only spell danger. These ravenous wolves went on a murderous spree against both livestock and humans, and in the space of just four days, this pack of 400 wolves went around the edge of town, killing and eating about 300 horses that belonged to the residents of the area. And because of the extremely cold climate, the local ranchers in the area also decided to raise reindeer. But perhaps this was the worst mistake of all. Reindeer in captivity don't have the essential survival skills that they would have had in the wild, and the wolves, they knew this and they took advantage of this. These murderous gray wolves stomped across the entire expanse of the land, huffing and puffing and blowing down every gate, every fence, every barricade that protected these naive animals. It was truly carnage. From one farm to another, these wolves ended up killing around 16,000 reindeer in total. No farm was spared, and no group of reindeer was fortified enough to withstand the mayhem that these wolves unleashed. But it wasn't over for the big bad wolves yet. Now one would think that 300 horses and 16,000 reindeer should satisfy the appetite of any group of 400 animals. But something diabolical was wrong with these wolves. They had gotten the taste of blood. And nothing was going to stop their rampage now. 
And so, as has never been seen before, this massive wolf pack went ahead not just killing, but also eating six children as they walked home from school. It was truly a uh, sad day for the entire population of this village. As the people gathered to count the losses that these wolves had just left with them, just in the year 2012 alone, it was concluded that this pack of 400 individual grey wolves had killed that total of 300 horses, 16,000 reindeer, and six young children. In response to all of these deaths, the regional authority, President Yegor Borisov, came up with a plan to rid the entire town of the wolves in a bid to prevent any more loss of human life and livestock, of course. In that accord, President Borisov authorized the creation of 24 teams of hunters and trappers with an offer of a $250 bounty per wolf hide. Borisov went on to offer an even larger prize sum for any hunter that brought in the most wolf hides. This, however, is not the only alarming incident involving ravenous wolves in Russia. In fact, there was a similar incident in the early 1900s during the First World War in 1916. As the Russian and German armies fought in Western Russia, they were attacked by packs of starving wolves. Initially, these attacks were directed at the wounded and dying soldiers as the wolves realized that they were defenseless and easy prey. But in no time, it seems like that wasn't enough for the wolves, either because they weren't challenging enough for their intelligent brains or because they simply preferred hunting their own prey. Hence, they began attacking the rear guard soldiers. Slowly and slowly, these guard soldiers began to disappear, one after another, as the wolves began to capture, kill, and eat them while the other soldiers simply thought they were going AWOL. Only one thing was true about their theory. These guard soldiers were becoming absent on duty, but considering the conditions surrounding their absence, there was absolutely no way for them to take leaves. As these wolves continued to capture the guard soldiers as prey and kill them, they needed more challenge and became as bold as charging into battles to attack the wounded soldiers while battles were still taking place. Crazy as it sounds, this occurrence during battles caused the fighting between the two sides to be stopped temporarily so as to fight off the packs. Fighting off these packs led to killing around a hundred of the wolves. And just like that, the rest of the pack of wolves fled. That settled, and then the fighting between the two camps resumed. In these two cases, from that of the 1900s and that of 2012, one thing remains clear. The reason for these attacks was only because the wolves were extremely hungry, as their usual prey seemed to be out of sight, leaving them with no choice but to go for what presented itself to be game. Desperate times do indeed call for desperate measures. While these two experiences might have become stories of the past, the way our society keeps pushing into animal habitats and destroying forests, the future might just as well be terrible. And if it ever happens, we will have to face the terror of yet another pack of murderous wild animals running riot. So, what would you do if you were walking alone in the forest and you saw a pack of 400 bloodthirsty wolves racing towards you? Would you try and run? Fight? Scream for your life? Let us know down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.